and we are live. Hello everyone, um, Megan Sano here representing Ski Racing Media. Today is our second day of our second annual Virtual Gear Week and we just wanted to say thank you to everyone who's participated so far. Um, it's been a blast for us to be able to partner with brands across the ski industry to present Virtual Gear Week and make equipment information widely accessible through virtual means. Um, tonight, I have the pleasure of introducing a brand you all know and love. Please join me in welcoming Rosignol. On the right side of your screen is Sean Gaysford, um, Rosignol's Alpine Race Manager. And on your left is Jake Stevens. Um, these two will be taking questions throughout the evening's presentation. So make sure to add in those comments on Facebook, if you're joining there, or if you're joining us from Zoom, you can pop them in the chat. Um, and at the end, they will be giving away a little prize to everyone who asks questions. So be sure to get yours in there. Um, without further ado, take it away, boys. Thank you very much. Um, welcome everybody to our Rosignol virtual showroom. Jake, thanks for joining me tonight. Yeah, thanks. Um, Basically, I would like to uh, introduce myself. I'm new to the United States. Um, I was a World Cup technician for many years. Um, and in 2017, 2018, I merged into the, my position as Canadian Race Alpine Manager and have recently taken over this position here in the United States. Um, as Megan said, please uh, send your questions via the chat comment section, and uh, we will be giving away a athlete bag filled with some goodies um, to somebody who participated and had some very good comments slash questions uh, at the end of the event. So I'd like to start tonight and talk about um, our ski lineup. We've got a great range of Alpine race skis, and we are going to start with our slalom lineup. So our slalom lineup, we have a junior section, which starts um, size 128 and works its way up to 149. Our slalom skis are all built and engineered um, with the weight and the size and the ability of the athlete. So when we have a 128, we'll gear towards uh, a U10 and a U12 lighter athlete. And as we work up our way, our segments, uh, the skis get a little bit longer, a little bit beefier, and to support the weight of the athlete. These junior skis all come with an R21 interface which means that's the plate that is on the ski that accepts the bindings. Slowly moving our way up the lineup, we have our, what we call our tweener slalom ski, which is a 150 centimeter. So this ski is basically a step up from the junior construction and just below our FIS um, skis. Now this ski will be, basically aimed for that athlete who is at the U14 level higher up and also the smaller U16s. Then when we move up to our 157 slalom ski, that has a R22 plate on it. And the R22 plate is a plate that was developed a couple of years ago and we introduced uh, to our junior program which has really increased the stability and the energy, the power um, that we get out of the ski and really focuses it in the right direction. The 157 is also not only a FIS women's ski, but it is for a lot of our second year U16s. Moving up to the 165 men's FIS slalom ski speaks for itself. We've had many very good results across all levels of racing, whether it's FIS, NORAM, and at the World Cup level. Going over to uh, by Jake, we've got our GS lineup. GS skis, we start at 135 in the junior sizing, right up to 165. 
very similar to the slalom skis, the junior GS skis have the R21 Pro plate, which will really allow that ski to have a really natural flex at the center of the ski. We also have then in our tweener category, we have a 165 working its way up to a 185. Now this construction again, will be geared around the U14, U16 age category. And this has the R22 plate. It is a little bit of a beefier construction ski as you go up in size. One nice point of that I'd like to point out is about the 185 tweener ski. This has a women's 188 fist construction but in a 27 meter radius ski. So we're really gonna see these U16s that are getting that, you know, working out in the gym, getting very strong, putting the power into, onto the ski, and they want these, this ski to really react to what they're doing. And just a reminder, this ski is not FIS legal. Then we've got our 188 and our 193 FIS GS skis, um, which speak for themselves. Sean, but before you move on from uh, the skis, uh, we have a question from somebody to start with. Um, what are the factory base bevels, um, base and edge factory settings? What do the skis come at? Um, and I know that uh, junior skis might come a little differently than adult skis. And so yeah. can you dive, dive into that a little bit? So we, our junior skis are all coming off with one degree base bevel and a three degree um, side edge tune. The factory skis, so when we get up, up to the fist skis, um, we are looking at uh, 0.5 in slalom and approximately two degrees on the side. And the reason why we do this is to really allow the athlete to um, dial in their own skis. And at this point, when they reach the fist level, Jake, um, they've sort of got an idea of what they're looking for and, you know, different setups, different snows, where they're coming from, east, west, um, artificial snow, more natural snow can really play a factor in that. And so when we're developing skis, uh, you know, we look at, you talked about junior skis, tweener skis, and uh, fists or adult skis. Uh, do we play with base bevels uh, while we're working on the constructions and doing that type of stuff to tune it in for an athlete uh, at each age level, let's say? Well, I think that the... The way that we develop the skis um, and integrate our base bevels and our tunings on the skis is starting at a young age. We, this is the developmental phase for these young athletes is so important that we do not want the ski to actually drive the athlete. We want the athlete to become what I like to call the artist. I want the athlete or we would like the athlete to decide when they want to start the turn, when they want to put all the pressure. And even more importantly, is when they want to release out of the turn. And so the idea with our base bevel and in combination with our constructions that we have, it just really allows that athlete to develop at a young age, get into the very good habits and develop very good technique. At a young age, Jake, as you know, these athletes, you know, it, it becomes imprinted in their, in their system. And this is where we want them to develop very, very good habits. Cool. Uh, another question about the plates. Uh, does the R22 race plate uh, accept uh, moving the bindings forward or backward uh, for boot size? Um, I think specifically for uh, smaller boots, moving the boot forward, let's say on the plate, um, is that something that we suggest doing or? So I always, that's a great question, Jake. I always suggest that you start off in a neutral position, having that boots lined up centered on our R22 plate. Um, I think that's a very good starting point. Now, definitely if there's some aspects in with an each individual's technique or with their style of skiing or possibly even the conditions of snow that you could test. But I think these are questions that the athlete needs to have with their coach, develop a plan of attack, 
And it doesn't mean by moving the plate up one whole pattern means that you're going to be a second faster. Another uh, racing plate question. Um, with the R22 race plate, are there any issues with using an older Rocker Flex SPX12 binding? No, the actual, the toe piece has, is the exact same. And the screw pattern, which is all underneath the brake, is exactly the same. So if by chance you have an old pair of Rocker Flex bindings lying around the house, you can mount it on the R22. The only thing is, is that when we developed the new Rocker Race binding, it was developed to really interact at the top performance of its capacity with our R22 plate. The R22 plate moves in a certain direction and with its fixed holes on the plate and the floating that we can see here, definitely works very, very well with our rocker race setup. Um, all right, so another question. Um, what uh, do we have for junior Super G skis for this year? So we have, we have a, for the U14 level, we have a Super G ski, which is 186 centimeters long with a approximately a 28.5 meter radius. So we develop that ski for the U14 level. At U16, Jake, we've got a 196, thir approximately 34 meter radius Super G ski, um, which again, these constructions are built with it, taking in mind the actual weight, size, and the ability of these young athletes. So the U14, if we were to take the 186 Super G and put it and flex the, the tip, with the 196, well, definitely the 186 will be a little bit softer. We really want to, when we develop the skis, is to be able to have that tip being able to really nice progressively roll into the snow, take a bite, and then carry out through the turn. Yep. Um, okay, I know in, uh, it's been a number of years since you offered a 183 30 meter, meter fist legal GS ski. Uh, what was the rationale for eliminating? Uh, this ski from our lineup? You know, to be honest, Jake, um, we always were asked to have longer skis. And those athletes that are asking for the longer skis and, and purchasing the longer skis were a huge majority. And unfortunately, the 183 30 meter GS ski was just you know, not in high demand. And as a company, when we focus on building, you know, top quality product, well, we want to spend our time and energy on product that our athletes want and need. Um, all right. I think that for right now is pretty much the, all the ski questions. There might be a couple more that I can dig into. We're getting well. Let me just, questions. Jake, so. since we had a couple of um, questions about uh, bindings and plates, yeah. Let me just go over our lineup of bindings and what bindings fit on which skis. So, as you know, we were talking before about our junior skis with the R21 Pro. And a good way to tell if you walk into a shop and you want to, you know, figure out, oh, what plate is on this ski? Is it an R21 or an R22? So the R21 Pro plate is actually in two pieces. And it really, like I said before, really allows to get that natural flex in the center of the ski. So you have two options of bindings that you can put on this ski. We have the NX7, and we also have what I have right back behind here, which is an SPX10 binding. Moving forward, when we go to our R22 plate, we have three options. So basically, we have an SPX12, we have an SPX15, and then a PX18. So by the numbers, I'm sure you guys can tell, uh, an SPX10. DIN goes up to 10, 12 up to 12, 15 up to 15, and 18 goes up to 18. Perfect. 
Um, so how about moving on to some ski boot stuff? We have some questions coming in about boots, but let's yep. maybe go through the Let's go through the boots. And if those questions, if I don't answer them, Jake, please interrupt me, Perfect. especially. So we're going to start with our short cuff line. So the short cuff line is we start with a 70 flex. So the idea of this boot is to really allow that junior skier to be able to get right over top with their shin right over top, keeps the heel locked in place. And the idea with these short cuffs is it really advantageous for our young athletes at a U12 level with the 70, we have the 90 and the 110, which will go up from U12, U14, and possibly up into the U16. Basically what it's allowing the athlete to do is learn how to use their ankles. Boots are probably the most important piece of equipment that we can help an athlete pick out. Um, it's very important that the athlete gets fitted and lined up in the right possible boot for their size. Hi everyone, we're gonna log them back on. They're currently, I think it was a Wi-Fi drop, so they'll be on shortly if you wanna hang out for a minute, but thanks for your patience. So basically, before we got cut off, 
I wanted to introduce our lineup of race boots for the higher level athletes. So we've had a lot of success over the years with our Z racing boot from Henrik Christofferson to Carlo Janka to many, many athletes from around the world that were able to accomplish their goals, whether they're Olympics, world championships, world cups, world cup titles, national championships. And this year, we are extremely proud to introduce with a lot of effort from our race department over in Europe, we were able to bring the exact same boot setup in what we're calling the Z-Soft. So the Z-Soft is a 110 flex boot, lace-up liner. Basically, a young athlete can put this boot on their feet and walk up to copper in November and see our top athletes, and they've got the exact same boot on their feet. Now, some people, Jake, they turn around and say, well, why should we go with a Z-Soft when I can grab a 110 short cuff? So I've got both boots right here. So first of all, we're going back to that short cuff. We've got a little bit wider boot, 97 millimeter last, a little bit more volume. And we just, around the world, were asked, can we have a 110 flex boot in our Z mold? And like I said before, a lot of work and effort went into this testing with young athletes in Europe and dialing it in. And it's just had really, really good feedback over the summer. And we, as we introduce this boot to our lineup this year, we've had tremendous, tremendous feedback from athletes, coaches, parents, and even shops saying that this boot is a pleasure to work with. And our goal when we produce new products is to have athletes, coaches, and parents have confidence in our product. And at the end of the day, if you've got confidence, that means you can go out and ski to the best of your ability and hammer into the results that you are striving for and working really hard for. Uh, a question about uh, flexes with boots. Um, when uh, do you suggest pulling a plug and uh, from the back of the boot or, or maybe going down in flex or uh, adjusting what you're doing for flex pattern, right? So we're talking about a 110 versus a uh, Z soft or Z soft. Uh, is it better to move up to a Z soft and try to make the boot much softer? Or if that 110 fits and flex correctly, is that the right boot to be in? You know, Jake, that's a great question. I think that first of all, any discussion has to be with your coach. And, you know, it would be so easy for you or I to make a suggestion to that athlete, but we don't get the opportunity to see them on snow, to see how they're performing. Um, we don't necessarily, with over a chat like this, we don't know how tall they are, uh, how much they weigh. So definitely, I think that the idea of pulling a bolt out of the back to soften it up a bit, to allow that athlete to actually flex their ankle and really work that, you know, the front fore aft push on the front of their boot is something that will, you know, take a little bit of time and the right people in the communication. I mean, you can't walk into the store and I say, Jake, I'm going to pull a bolt for you right there. Right. So it's something that has to be discussed, has to try. And the easy part of it is, is it only takes an Allen key. You pull it out, you try it for a couple of runs, you try it for a day. I do suggest that you don't just try it for one run. Any testing that happens, there's nobody that can come out with a definitive answer after doing one run. I mean, you've seen it, uh, you know, even more than I have of all the years that you're at the World Cup level and working with high level athletes. Um, and there's always this idea that uh, World Cup ski racers are in the stiffest boot possible um, and everything is just as powerful as it possibly can be. But from my experience and, and yours is much deeper than mine is that's probably not true, is it? No, it isn't. It isn't. You know, when you're working with those top level athletes, they're doing the same thing that you're doing 
and they're wanting to flex their ankles. They want to feel what's going on on the snow. Don't forget when you're out east and it's, you know, zero degrees in January, you know, the boot does, you know, get, feel stiffer. So at the same time, these athletes are looking for a similar feeling. You know what I mean? So depending on, and that's one good thing about dual core is how the progressive flex of the boot is less affected by the temperature change. So chances are, if you get set up by one of our local race shops um, with the advice of your coach to get you in the right boot for you, well, then that with our lineup of boots, you should be able to run that boot in all conditions, in all weather. And really, like I said, I can't strive enough. The, the, the flex of your ankle is so important. Don't forget, Jake, the boot is the only thing that you have in contact with your body to your equipment. And all that energy that you have that's coming from your body and all your movements directly hits the boot and then is pushing forward through our binding, our plate, the ski, and which turns out to the energy on the snow. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, one of the questions is while you're uh, holding the, the Z soft in your hands, what, uh, what is the last on that boot? So the last is a 93. It does have the factory little bit of a punch, if you want to call it. I don't really call it a punch. I call it more of a little bit of a push. Also around the ankle pockets, which means it's just a little bit less work for the boot fitter on those three key spots that a lot of boot fitters have to do a lot of work. It also has the dins are already routed. So you can take this boot, get it fitted and click right away onto your, into your binding, no problem. All right, let me scan this just a little bit here, Sean, um, because there's a lot of questions coming in, which is great to see people engaging here. Um, uh, sorry about this as I slide down here. Um, do you, uh, what boots come with a lace-up liner? That's, that's probably a, a good question for everybody. So yeah, so our Z-Soft is our first boot that comes with lace-up liner. We go from our, like I said, Z-Soft, 110 Flex. We have a Z-G-J, which has a lace-up liner included in our Z-A, Z-A+, Z-B, and Z-C. So uh, all of the junior boots, 110, 90, uh, and 70 short cuffs. No lace up no liner. Lace up liner. Nope. Okay, great. Great. Um, all right. So I think if there's any last questions that people want to fire in, if I've missed something, I'm sorry about our uh, losing the internet for a second. Uh, so we lost all of the questions. Uh, and Megan's been kind enough to try to catch us up on a lot of it. But one of them was um, with the global shipping situations, are we behind? And something that I can speak to on that is, we, um, we strive at uh, the Rosinal Group to get product in the country very early. So we actually are way ahead of the ball with how we ship stuff. Uh, pretty much every one of your race dealers around the country, correct me if I'm wrong, Sean, yep. you've been looking around is they've got stock on their walls and, um, and it's time to go get, get your product. Yeah, um, I can speak as coming from Canada and now here in the United States that our North American uh, race dealers most of them have quite full, full walls already. And definitely I would not be waiting until the week before Thanksgiving to go and buy your product because, you know, those shops will empty out fast. And, you know, as we went through some tough times with the pandemic last year, I think we're coming around a little bit and everybody's, you know, keen, motivated, feels like we're going to get to a full season. Hopefully up in Canada, we'll be able to have some races again. Um, I really have the feeling, Jake, that our, you know, product is going to be going off the wall very fast at our race dealers. Uh, another quick question about boots. When should you look to transition from an off the shelf race boot to a plug boot? Um, so I guess that question um, is, is a little bit um, um, interesting because our plug boots are, um, or our Z boots yep. are the same boots that our World Cup athletes are racing in, correct? Yes, correct. So when you look at what is an off the shelf 
Um, we can look at the short cuff. Uh, you can look at something like the Hero uh, 140, which is going to be more like your 110, except yep. it's got a tall cuff on it or, yep. or a 120, uh, Hero 120. So uh, there is a difference between that. Uh, really, I guess the idea is when do you shift from maybe a short cuff to a, to a, a, a Zebu, let's say. So if we were going to go by category, Jake, I would really think that we're looking that that Z-Soft would probably come in on average. Of course, there's always exceptions. But to me, in my opinion, we are looking at the second year U14 to get into a Z-Soft. But then again, like I said earlier, the boot is very athlete specific. So we cannot compare um, every second year U14 to be able to get into a Z-Soft. Has to do with their height, with their weight, and also their skiing ability. I think one common mistake that we have all seen, whether it's at races in training or even out free skiing, is that there are some athletes that have boots that are probably too stiff for them. So the idea again is to make a plan of attack with your coach, you know, get into one of our race dealers and, you know, get the proper boot for you. There's, you know, just because I'm saying you 14 Jake and an athlete feels that they're behind the curve and they feel that, oh no, I got to rush into it. That might be a really bad mistake for their career and their evolution as an athlete. So what I think you're saying is you should probably go in uh, to your local shop with your coach and your parents and have the boot properly fit for you. Yeah. Uh, and trust your, your local, you know, professional boot fitters at your local Rosinal race centers. Right. I mean, yep. that's, we can tell you all the information about every one of our products, but we don't know what you look like. We don't know how you ski. We don't know how strong you are, how much you've grown or not grown. Uh, right. I'm guessing yep. that's what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. And especially this time of year, Jake, uh, a lot of ski clubs are starting back up with dry land training. You know, kids are going back to school um, this is something that definitely it's a conversation to have with your coach, make a plan of attack, get yourself an idea. So when you walk into that race shop, you're going in with in the back of your mind that your coach is suggesting that you get into a 110 flex. And then our Rosignol race dealers will be able to, you know, give you the option to try on whether it's a Z soft or one of our, you know, 110 short cuff. And with the boot fitter, and if great, if the coach is able to, to be involved and be there and help you pick the right boot, great. But I really think that the communication is so important. You know, we're talking about dialing in equipment to be able to perform at the best of your ability. Exactly. And across all of our products, right? Exactly. Idea. Exactly. And I mean, people might already be tired of me saying, you know, having this conversation, but with my experience and your experience as well, communication is so important. Yeah. At the World Cup level, Jake, the amount of time that we spend with the athlete communicating starts, you know, right away in the morning when you get onto the slope, you actually riding up the lifts, up the T-bars, you're communicating about your equipment, about right. your setup, about your previous runs. When you finish the day, you're having lunch, talking about training. I had a great run. What did I do differently? You know, whether it's your line, your technique, or whether it was your equipment setup that you were on. And that communication never stops. The earlier that the young athletes can develop a sense of communication and feel comfortable talking about their equipment, what's going on, what they're feeling from, you know, basically from the feet inside the boot and what, how it's reacting on snow will definitely help you perform at the top of your ability. Um, okay, so the, um, the winner of the, the gift or the, uh, the swag bag um, is Dennis Carroll. So uh, you can reach out directly to, uh, to Megan. Uh, and and get the information to her and we'll be able to get you this athlete bag full of goodies um and uh i think if there's no other questions if you got any real quick you can fire them in there um but you know as sean said uh communication is key and getting the right product uh for the right athlete remember those world cup athletes out there started as juniors too right yep Everybody starts at the, uh, at the young level, at club level, and works their way up. Exactly. Um, all right. You got anything in closing, Sean? Um, I just want to wish everybody a great season. 
Um, keep working hard this fall, get your equipment dialed up nice and early. And I hope to see you all, and Jake as well, uh, see you all out on the slopes, whether it's training or racing real soon. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you.